11 players with one kill each. I mean, it wasn't just all Amber IGD or all, you know, Kate Lang. There were so many players that got to contribute, and that is what the team effort really has shown. Yeah, Bailey, how nice was it for them to kind of bounce back after that loss against Long Beach? Yeah, so I think it's such a great thing to see Hawaii have such a deep bench. I think they will highly rely on their players um, off the bench when we get further into the season, and so it's always great to have options. Yeah, a deep bench for sure. Maybe we'll see that a little bit here tonight. Of course, it's going to be a marathon throughout the Big West Conference season. After tonight, basically a third of the way through the 18-match schedule, a look at some of the other results tonight around the BWC. You see Santa Barbara keeping pace at the top of the conference with a five-set thriller in Davis. The other big result, as you look at the bottom of the screen there, CSUN in five over Long Beach State. And so the beach... Kind of coming back to the pack, if you will. Santa Barbara remains the lone unbeaten in the Big West Conference standings. Cal Poly at 5-1, and one, a Hawaii a chance to join the Mustangs there in a tie for second place. Long Beach State now at 4-2, and two. UC Davis at 4-2, and two. and then it is going to be a tight race for that sixth and final spot into the Big West Conference tournament come next month. And so as you look at things, Bailey, where do you kind of make of Hawaii's positioning right now in third, a chance to move into second here at kind of the third way mark? Well, obviously, it's still very young in the season, and there's so much opportunity out there for Hawaii, but also for the other teams like Cal Poly to move up in the rankings. I think it'll be really interesting when they play UC or Santa Barbara on the road next week, so that'll be a fun game to watch. Yeah, Lisa, the, the overall strength of this conference, right, the top five, everybody kind of focused in on that. Obviously, with Long Beach State and UC Irvine, uh, excuse me, UC Santa Barbara, you saw their RPI there as well. The beach probably going to take a little bit of a hit. Hawaii as well, based on you know all the factors that go into that. But what do you make to the depth of the conference so far this season? Well, I'm, I'm nicknaming this conference the Wild Big West because you know what? When CSUN <laughs> takes Long Beach State in five and UC Santa Barbara just squeaks by UC Davis in five, I think anything can happen as the season progresses. These teams are getting better. The, the injured players are coming back on the court, and the coaching staff are putting the pieces of their puzzles together. Yeah, and of course, we see a lot of these teams, right? The records maybe belie their capabilities as a lot of these Big West Conference programs playing a ton of Power 5 opponents throughout the season, throughout the non-conference season, I should say. For more on tonight's matchup, let's send it courtside to the best in the biz, the pair <laughs> calling tonight's match. Ganoli and Chris McLaughlin. Hey, thanks a lot, Jordan. Good to have you here this evening. Yes, next to CMAC, Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. And uh, Chris, we'll start on an interesting and somewhat somber note because oftentimes we meet and find ourselves at the crossroads of real life and sports. Uh, and of course, it was international news on the other side of the globe, the surprise attack on Israel uh, by Hamas militants, and it affects, of all teams, the University of Hawaii, and one player in particular, Tali Hakas, who was a former member of the Israeli army. And so you just have to wonder, with all of that going on, what is possibly going through her mind? As we understand it, through third-person avenues, uh, her family is okay, uh, but according to Robin Amo, uh, she is just one of those warriors, just one of those bulls, as Robin Amo likes to say. Uh, she's not going to let that stuff rattle her, and yet you wonder, uh, at this level of collegiate volleyball and all the things that bother the normal and average student-athlete, uh, what must be going through Tali Hawkes' mind? She's amazing. You know, she's so resilient. You know, she's like a... She's been two years in the Israeli army, so she's like a 20-year-old freshman. But you saw the smiles on her face right there. Look at her smile, mm -hmm. easy to smile, easy to laugh, so enthusiastic about the game of volleyball. She loves her teammates. I think that's taken a lot off her mind here as, as certainly part of her mind has got to go back on the other side of the globe thinking about her family. For sure, we'll be uh, playing with uh, a heavy heart uh, for sure for some of her fellow countrymen and women. Now, uh, we do have to talk a little volleyball here, though, because that is why we are here. On the other side, you have UC Irvine, a team that comes in with four wins overall. They're coming off of a sweet victory, like Hawaii is, uh, that came earlier this week. Uh, and so they're feeling a little bit better about themselves. They hit well over 300 in that match on Tuesday. Uh, their head coach, Ashley Hain, though, uh, she m does not mix words when she talks about the fact <laughs> that uh, this team has been through some stuff here this year, from injuries to two star players that transferred out of the program after last season. Uh, it's been a tough go. Yeah, it's really been challenging. You see her there, she's much more relaxed now than I thought she would be given uh, the gravity of this event where her team just snapped 
a three-game losing streak by beating Fullerton, but they played so well that night. And I asked her, Ashley, why aren't you hitting 344 every night? And she <laughs> says, well, you know, we kind of do the first two sets, but we, we've been reverse swept twice. And that really took a lot from our confidence, and, and it's really affected our play a lot. So let's see how they do the first two sets tonight. See if they can hit 340 the first couple sets against Hawaii. That would be amazing. Well, if they do hit for a high percentage, likely uh, one of the individuals who will be doing some of the work will be Hunter Riedel. Uh, she is their top hitter. Uh, she actually is coming off of that Cal State Fullerton match where she dropped 15 kills and hit 423, averaging almost 2.9 kills per set this year. She is a graduate student, transferred from Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut, and yet, as we know, the, the awkwardness of the class system in college sports now because of the pandemic and everything else, she still has three years of eligibility left as a grad student. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty kind of complicated to explain, but you're right. <laughs> How do you get three years of eligibility as a grad student? But uh, she'll be getting a couple of master's degrees, I understand. But I called Charlie Brandt today. He does the play, but he does the color for UC Irvine. And he's mentioned uh, Hunter Riedel. He said, you know, She's got one heavy arm. If she can hit it into the court, she's amazing. She'll score big, a lot of points for UC Irvine. But she has a tendency to be inconsistent, he said. So we'll watch for that tonight to see if she can be consistent. Could make a big difference in the outcome tonight for Irvine. We have seen some great battles between these two teams, and most certainly Hawaii has to be anticipating a tougher match tonight than what they experienced last night against Cal State Fullerton. And we will bring first serve to you in just a little bit. But for now, let's send it back over to Jordan and the Corner Crew. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, grad transfers, transfer portal, three years of eligibility. This is the day and age of college athletics, right? Hawaii, no different than a lot of programs you see around the country. Eight total transfers for the for the Bows here. And of course, seven of those Division I transfers for the University of Hawaii. And we've seen a lot of them play huge role starters for this group. And so let's go a little round table here, guys, right? And obviously the transfer portal, right? It is such a big topic of conversation. Bailey, we'll start with you, right? A little more new age, if you will. What are the pros and cons from a player's standpoint of the transfer portal? Um, from a player's standpoint, I think it opens up a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, sometimes it's not always the right fit. And you're so young when you make these decisions to commit to a college. And people do change. So it's a great opportunity for them to explore something else. Yeah, and for you, right? You went through that process coming yeah. home from Utah. What was that process like for you? Um, it, the transfer portal was still very new for me. Um, I think it was like a year into the transfer portal. And so, I don't know, just navigating it was kind of crazy, but I was very fortunate to be able to come back home and play in the stand. Yeah, of course, when you graduate in three years, it opens up some opportunities for you when, you, when you're a brainiac like Bailey. Lisa, it was a different era when you played. Uh, from, from a player's standpoint, even from a coach's standpoint, how difficult is it, or, or maybe not, to build a program in this day and age? I think it's very difficult from a coach's perspective to build a program. You invest in these players and you build them up from freshmen, 18, 19, 20 years old, and all of a sudden they decide they want to transfer because they changed their major or they, they have a better program or whatever the reason may be. So I, I think from the coaches, and on the other end, the coaches also benefit because if somebody leaves, they can go pick somebody who's choosing to come to Hawaii, like a Paula Gershing. That's a great example. And a Bailey Choi who decide, hey, uh, we really want to have a mix up here. So I think there's pluses and there's positives and I don't think it's going away. I just know it's a really hard situation for both athletes and especially for the coaches because there's a small window of opportunity those coaches have to pick from that portal and then it closes. It's not like all year long they can go to the portal. It's like this little window and I'm not exactly sure when it is, but it's small. And speaking of Paula Gershing, we'll hear from her on the other side of our first break when we continue on with more Game On. Working our way to first serve between the Anteaters and the Rainbow Wahine. I think it's so amazing. I've never seen so many people cheer for a volleyball game, especially in the college level. In my old school, we had probably like maximum 20 fans. Um, so it's a big change for me, and um, it's just amazing. I don't even know what I feel. It's, it's great. It's, I just feel grateful like that so many people um, are there to, pull, uh, like, to um, cheer for you and like, support you. It's, it's really amazing. 
Welcome back to Manoa as the Rainbow Wahine gets set to take on UC Irvine. Dick Pink Knight here at Stan Sheriff Center. Utah, Youngstown State transfer Paula Gershing has surely embraced the Hawaii experience all the while staying very hungry in the practice gym. And double days was really, really hard for me just because um, we did a lot of things that I'm not good at. Like, um, like I'm, I'm really confident in hitting and um, serving, but defense is something that I'm like, I would say the least confident in. And we did a lot of defense, so it was really, really hard for me. Um, but yeah, I got through it, so. <laughs> and I think it made me stronger. She is, she was slowly just going, you know. It's, can Paula do it? Yes. I think she can definitely get better. Oh yeah, in every aspect of her game, in every one. Like she, I don't think she's fully there with passing. She's holding her own and passing. But she gets more reps and everything, I think she gets better. Like her defense, she's, you know, right there. But can she get better? Yes. I don't think she hit any ceiling in any part of her game. Yet. Last week when um, Coach Robin put me in for two sets, I played two full sets. That already helped me a lot just because um, I like got the feeling like, okay, I can play with the team. Like I, I can actually like function with the team, um, which is like a big part. Like you can be a great player on your own, but you have to work with the team. So that gave me a lot of confidence. And then um, last game against uh, San Diego helped me a lot. Like I think, I, I would say I did pretty good. I do think I can do better. Well, the junior from Germany, Youngstown State transfer, having a terrific start to the season has started the last couple of matches here for the Rainbow Wahine had another solid outing last night Bailey as we continue on with the Gershing discussion what's kind of earned her that spot in the starting lineup yeah I think she's such a consistent player and coach Robin and her teammates recognize that and you don't see a lot of like big dips from her and she does bring like that emotion to the game yeah Lisa she's had quite the journey right from from Europe to Ohio and now here to Hawaii. How has that kind of impacted her play on the court and, and her growth uh, as a, uh, a young lady? Well, you gotta look, but she's, she's a long way from home. Either way, Hawaii or in Youngstown, um, it, it's hard. I know that when she first got here, she was a little battered and bruised, and I think working her way into the lineup took some time. When you're coming into a program, you're new to it, you're new to a culture, you're a long way from home. Homesickness can play a big part in that. But I think she's a fighter and she's a winner. She's got a ton of experience. She's, she was honorable, honorable mention All-American. She has over a thousand kills in two years at Youngstown, which says a lot, it speaks highly. So I think she's just getting into her comfort zone right now. Yeah, and you can see that, right? It talked about in that package, right? We know about the offense, the defense, something in the past that she's been working on, seven digs to her credit last night. We'll continue on. We'll dive into the UC Irvine matchup when we return back here to stand at Sheriff Center. More game on coming your way right here on Spectrum. Well, welcome back to Game On, presented by Bank of Hawaii, counting down to first serve for Rainbow Wahine Volleyball. The UC Irvine Anteaters in town. A look at some of the season comparison. The Anteaters at 4 and 12 have played a really difficult non-conference schedule. A number of Pac-12 teams on their non-conference slate. Hawaii, the more dominant team at the Nets and at the service line, as well as the Rainbow Wahine look to improve to 5 and 1 through the first six matches so far this season. Bailey, as we get a look at some of the stat leaders for the Rainbow Wahine, Caitlin continues to be consistent there at that setter spot. Yes, definitely. I think a lot of the success of Hawaii relies literally in the hands of the setters. So I love to see when Kate and Jackie spread the offense and putting all hitters in really good situations. Um, another, sorry, another great player that did awesome yesterday, Kennedy Evans. She did a lot of good things, positive block touches and had a really high hitting percentage. Yeah, good stuff there, Bailey. On the other side for the Anteaters, Lisa uh, Kanoa and, and C-Mac talked about Hunter Riedel really has led the way the grad transfer who else has maybe stood out for you and, and the anteaters well these other two that we see here on the screen mariana Loney is doing a great job as well as isabella or bella scarlet and these anteaters are coming back from some some critical losses and they're really working on their offense they they really have struggled because their outside hitter their number one player has not been in, on the court we're going to see if we see her tonight in Kendra McDonald. We'll see if she comes back from her ankle injury. 
All right, time to check out the watch list sponsored by Heineken. We'll look at a couple of players to watch in this contest. And Lisa, we'll start with you. Who have you got your eye on for the Anteaters? Well, I'm looking at Emma Napoleon, and only because of our when we had our interview with Coach Ashley Haynes, she said this young lady, redshirt freshman, has come back from a knee surgery. She's been out a year and a half, and she didn't know if she'd play again, but she's just this kid who is so reliable and such a hard worker, and she can count on her. She's a six-rotation player. She's from an incredibly well-known athletic family. Her family's all here to support her, but this is why I'm looking at this young lady is because when a coach says that, I got to believe her. And Bailey, on the other side, I know you've got your eye in the middle for the University of Hawaii. Yes, yeah. Like I said, Kennedy had such a great night last night, and I'm looking for her to get those positive block touches so that UH can convert those into kills. Um, she's working hard to transition and be available for the set. Counting down to first serve here. Lisa, we got about 30 seconds left. How important is it to get off of a fast start like we saw last night? You know what, if they can do what they did last night, this team will be fine. Absolutely. Anthems and first serve coming up on the other side. Irvine and Hawaii up next. Volleyball fans, please rise for the singing of our national anthem and Hawaii Ponoi. We'll ask you to remove your hats if you're wearing them at this time. Please welcome to the Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, 2020 Sacred Hearts graduate. Plays the ukulele, singer, songwriter, Hawaii Stars overall 2020 Best of the Best Grand Champion, Last Island Idol, awarded the silver ticket to American Idol, Regular performer at places like Alejandro's, Kapahulu, Tiki Grill, Delish, Village Night Market, and other places. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rachel Faith. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched we're so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Hawaii po no i na na i ko mo i kalani ali i ke ali i maku alani e kame ha. Meha e na kawa e pale me ka ie ma ku alani e ka meha meha e na 
khoa e pole me ka and Rachel Faye. Aloha ahi ahi. Good evening, everyone. The Rainbow Ohana welcomes you to Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii in majestic Manoa for tonight's Big West Conference Women's Volleyball Contest matching the UC Irvine and Eaters. Versus the reigning Big West champions, your Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. <laughs> Introducing the UC Irvine and Eaters starting lineup. At center, 5'10 freshman from Laguna Niguel, California, number one, Nicole Feliciano. And middle blocker, six foot junior from Christchurch, New Zealand, number five, Ella Gardner. And opposite, six one graduate student from Dana Point, California, number six, Hunter Riedel. And outside hitter, six foot junior from Markleyville, California, floor captain number seven, Mariana Bertoloni. And outside hitter, six one sophomore from San Jose, California, number eight, Kendra McDonald. And Libero, 5'10", sophomore from Burbank, California. Number 11, Campbell Jensen. And that middle blocker, 6'1", graduate student from Portland, Oregon. Number 21, Isabella Scarlett. The assistant coaches are Nasseri Tumanovao, Brandon Thick, and Carly Moreno. Head coach for the Anteaters, Ashley Shane. Ah, la, yeah. la, la, wait till I get my money right. I had a dream I could buy my way to heaven when I woke up with that on a necklace. I told God I'd be back in a second. Man, it's so hard not to act reckless. And now, me and starting lineup. I guess the money should have changed them. I guess I should have forgot where I came from. Excuse me, was you saying something? You can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. For your Hawaii, Rainbow Wahine. And middle blocker, 6'3", senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Number three, Amber Igedi. And outside hitter, six foot senior from Dublin, Ohio. Floor captain, number six, Riley Wagner. And outside hitter, 5'11", freshman from Kafar Saba, Israel. Number nine, Tally Hakas. At center, 5'10", junior from Keller, Texas. Number 10, Kate Lang. At middle blocker, 6'2", senior from Twin Falls, Idaho, number 12, Kennedy Evans. At Libero, 5'7", senior from Kalamazoo, Michigan, number 13, Talia Evans. And at opposite, six foot senior from San Diego, California, number 18, Kendra Ham. 
The assistant coaches are Kaleo Baxter, Nick Castello, and Skylin Engelman. Head coach for your Rainbow Wahine, Robin Almo. put its depth on full display last night as a season high 14 Rainbow Wahine saw the floor with 11 Lady Bows recording at least one kill in the three set sweep over Fullerton. Also on display was Hawaii's dominance at the net as the Manua Roofing Company tallied 10 and a half blocks in a match that lasted less than 90 minutes. Coming up, Zot Zot, the Ant Eaters of UC Irvine will take their shot against the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. And with that, we welcome you inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Kanoa Leahy sitting next to Chris McLaughlin. c -Mac, take us through the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. UCI is right down the middle. If Feliciano, their center, can get Ella Gardner and Isabella, the middles, involved early, it should open up the outsides. Gardner and Scarlett hit 667 versus Fullerton last Tuesday. A repeat of that could spell trouble for Hawaii. And for Hawaii, which revolving door? Robin Amo played 14 players last night with three different lineups. And all lineups played well. I don't think it matters which door Robin chooses as long as AI is in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the uh, old game show, Let's Make a Deal. A lot of doors and a lot of options behind those doors. And yeah, yeah. in most cases, uh, pretty good prizes yeah. behind yeah. each and every for one sure. of those. For sure. UC Irvine coming in 4-12 and 12 overall, 2-3 and three in the Big West Conference. First swing for Hawaii goes to Riley Wagner, and she's able to tattoo that one, averaging 2.6 kills per set this year. The Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineups will be scrolling at the bottom of your screen. So Riley Wagner getting the start, and Tali Hakas getting the start for Hawaii. A little bit of a different look than what we saw last night for sure in set one. Exactly. Best part of that first play. Best part of the first play, the pass by Talia Edmonds. She's worked hard to make her passing more perfect. And a rotation violation against UC Irvine on the second point of the match. And that gives Hawaii a freebie. So just like that, two serving zero. And Kendra Ham, who had five kills, hit 455 last night against Fullerton with the serve. Outside swing goes to Hunter Riedel. She's the top hitter for Irvine. Here's the top hitter for Hawaii, Amber Igidi on the slide. Couldn't put it down. Riedel loops it over, diving past there, Edmonds. Set a little tight to the pin there for Wagner, but she was able to put it off the block. And then the set to Igidi was too high. And so a couple of uh, missed targets that time by the setter, Kate Lang, gives Irvine their first point. Yeah, a little bit off, not like Kate to be that inaccurate, but uh, she certainly was for those two sets. And so here is Mariana Bertoloni with the serve team captain for Irvine. Wagner pounds it off the block and out. Riley Wagner, who saw a very lengthy straight starting match streak come to an end last night. That was very unusual, but you know what? Uh, Kaylin Alexander really played well during the week and Robin uh, Mole just decided to reward her with that. And Paula Gershing also played well during the week. So Riley was was out, but she's right back in. Right back in. For good reasons. Yeah, 49 straight starts for Riley Wagner. That came to an end last night, but as mentioned, back in the starting rotation here uh, this evening, and also in the starting rotation for UC Irvine, Kendra McDonald, as you take a look at Ashley Hain in her seventh season as head coach for the Ant Eaters, coming off of a three-set sweep against Cal State Fullerton on Tuesday. And her Anteaters played about as well as they have maybe all season. Hit 344, outblocked the Titans 7 to 4, outdug Fullerton 41 31 for the match. It was a solid, solid outing for the Anteaters that night. Ashley Hain is hoping for the same tonight. Opposite side set, and that is Riedel going off the block. And here is. Kennedy Evans, who has just been on some kind of fender as of late. That's a great way to put it. She just can do no wrong. Really does a great job of presenting herself in transition and on, on great passes. She's just right there all the time and 
Kate Lang's learning to trust her more and more with more sets. Good look there at Robin Amo, head coach for Hawaii, and then the block is up. Tally Hawkes all by herself saying uh-uh and returning it to sender. Tally Hawkes has put up a wall, and read the set perfectly, read the arm swing perfectly, and picked up her first solo block. Was in on two blocks last night. That is block number 19 for her on the season. Swing there by McDonald off the block. Hawaii keeping it alive. Lang going to back row set it to Wagner who hits it into the net. It was a little crowded in the middle of the floor on that occasion for Hawaii. And all those second touches should go to the setter. Not sure why Kendra Hand wanted to set that. Ham wanted to set it, but uh, ball got put up anyway and Riley Wagner just could not deliver. It wasn't a, it wasn't a great set. So here is Indy Desmet, the reserve setter for Irvine. Lang going to go high and away to Hawkes, and again, the set drifted, but you saw the gooseneck <laughs> by Tali Hawkes. She left it up there almost like a Steph Curry three-pointer or something. So this is a young lady who played on the right side most of the preseason. Now there's the gooseneck, but now she's playing more left side and seems to be happy over there. So a couple of big-time plays already for Tali Hawkes. And going off the block and out is Bertoloni. So Bertoloni, who's averaging 2.5 kills per set, coming through there. And now McDonald on the serve for the Anteaters. Lang going middle to Evans. That set a little low, but Evans goes off the block. Here's Ham getting a good swing at it, but she gets roofed. Irvine has some size in that front line, and Ella Gardner at six feet, a junior from Christchurch, New Zealand, was able to get her fingerprints on that one. Yeah, they, they definitely have size throughout their lineup, and, and uh, Ashley Hain can put a lot of different lineups out there. A quick outside set to Ham. She had to soft touch it over. Bertoloni goes off the fingertips of the block. Ham, a truer swing that time. The save by Desmet over the net, and Evans couldn't get it down. So Anteaters on the attack. They run the slide. Gardner dug up by Lang. Bump set goes to Hawkins over a double block. And that was ferocious from the freshman from Israel. Yes. Tali Hawkins looked so good in this shot. Look at that. One step close. Hammer it down the line. Most, most players hit that cross court. So the block was cross court, waiting for her. And then she fooled him. She says, I got a line shot too. Playing with a heavy heart this evening. Obviously the news on the surprise attack of Israel by Hamas militants. Hundreds of casualties. And of course, Tali Hakas, a former member of the Israeli army. You have to imagine that hit her in a certain way. And she is playing with a certain spirit here this evening. And perhaps that can be infectious for the rest of her team. Robin Amo saying, if there is one player who can focus through that, who has the toughness to be able to withstand that emotion, it is Tali Hakas. I would agree. I, those two years in the military had to toughen her up. And, and she's just a you know, really, really competitive spirit. Maybe the most, I think, the most enthusiastic and passionate of everyone and the best celebrator by far. <laughs> yeah. Hall of Fame level celebrator as a net violation goes against Hawaii. What do you think here through this first stretch of set one, what you're seeing on either side? You know, each side has had a new player in. Hawkes was new for Hawaii, and, and Kendra McDonald was new for Irvine. It seems to me like both lineups are playing pretty well. And here is Becca Sakoda, Iolani alum. Transfer from Illinois with the serve and forces the overpass. Easy pickings there for Isabella Scarlett in the middle of the pack to bounce it down and Irvine within two. A good serve there by Sakota. Sakota from Kakako and Iolani, as you said. State champion in 2018. Won the Ann Kang tournament two times in, in her career. And she handcuffs Tali Hakas on the line serve and you see some of the Becca Sakota family members and support crew. As 
a member of an Illinois squad that went 22 and two and made it to the NCAA regional semifinals. As Kennedy Evans able to pound it down, good pass that time as Sakota went right back at Tali Hawkes. Yeah, Sakota tried to work on her again and it was a top serve, but Hawkes handled it well. Look at her move to her right, good platform, put it right where Kate Lang could set Evans. Great play, but all started by Tally Hawkins. See the numbers for Evans, and she has been just incredible the last couple of weeks. Big swing there by Bertoloni. The block slowed it down. Lang goes middle to IGD. And the block slowed that one down. Over on two goes the setter Feliciano, but Lang, the quick reflexes. However, free chance now for Irvine. What a diving save by Hawkins over the net. They run the slide, and this is Scarlett dug up by Lang. So bump set Hawkins and Ham through the block. We play on, Anteaters go back to Bertoloni. Soft touch, pancake save Lang. And we continue amid a roar from the crowd. Slide the Scarlet, she's blocked. This rally not over yet. The swing finally goes out off the palm of Bertoloni. And Hawaii wins a marathon. We talked to Lang earlier this week. She pops up one right there. She's a pancake right there. She told me the practices this week were as tough as they were all year long. Playing a lot of defense like that. I think Ashley Hain pondering a challenge there on that pancake potentially that we showed. And she is in fact going to challenge the call. I'm assuming that's what she was looking at there. I'm sure, I'm sure it is the call. Let's see, Wayne Lee going to be sporting the headset here. Dixon Chun is the R1 across the way. Mark Nakashima, Kevin Chun, the two line judges. Pretty sure she got her hand under this. What do you think? She got the spatula out, Kanoa? Looks like the ball ends right under her hand. Well, this might be a better angle. Well, looks like she got it underneath there. Well, I think from Ashley Haynes' perspective, you, know, you see her raise her hand right there like she thought the rally would be over right there. And there has to be something definitive, I think, to reverse the call. And uh, from either of the two angles we've so far seen, I'm not sure if there's enough there. Yeah, I totally agree. Hmm. That one there looked like it might hit the ground, but I, you know, it's it's... Again, I don't know how dependent This could be very this helpful one. here. Wow, that's awfully close. Yeah. Very close. All right, well, do our best uh, Steve Harvey impression here, and <laughs> survey says. <laughs> and he's going to say that it got down. I don't see much argument from Kate Lang there. She just goes right back to play, as she should. Have that next play mentality, but you know, sometimes players will go, they'll, they'll turn to the referee and go, are you kidding me? <laughs> the replay really show that? Well, Ashley Hain wins the challenge, so she retains both of her challenges. And now Irvine within one. Hawaii led by as many as four when it was 7-3. Nine serving 10. And Lang will go outside to Wagner. She's blocked back. Edmonds the cover. Lang goes the reverse side to Ham, and she blasts it off the hands and out. A Kendra Hammer. And Hawaii up two. Great swing by Ham that time. She had a split block. She could have gone cross court. Instead, she chose to go down the line. In fact, she only had one blocker up at all, so great choice by her to tool the, the one blocker's hands. Well, what, you're hitting 316 here in this opening frame compared to 222 for the Anteaters. High and away, the set goes to Riedel. She's the top hitter for Irvine. 2.9 kills per set. A 6'1 grad student from Dana Point, California, actually transferred from Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. And she was so swift in her studies, graduated in three years, and still has three years of eligibility, would you believe? Unbelievable. Oh, Amber Igedi, heavy-handed. And she's able to record her first kill of this match on her second attempt. 
Right, GD, six kills, five blocks last night, had an ace, got in the dig column, hit 417. You start to run out of words to describe just how good Amber Igidi has become here in her volleyball career. She will go down, we say it every time, as one of the all-time greats. And she proves it almost every night. Yeah, she really does. And Robin Amo giving her more leadership responsibility these days. Gave her a full timeout yesterday. Robin said, hey, you know what? You got this timeout, Amber, handle it. And she handled that set on the slide perfectly. And yeah, that was interesting. Uh, Robin Amo uh, trying to provide a platform for Amber Igidi to assert her leadership a little bit. And so she ran the huddle. And uh, oftentimes you'll see coaches maybe allow players to start a timeout huddle, right? right? But in that case, Robin Amo telling us, oh no, Amber ran the whole thing, a minute 15. And it was well received, as I understand. Well, that pass tight to the net and then returned over. So Hawaii on the attack, here's IGD again on the slide. How quick was she to track around and Lang serving up some nectar? The straight footwork. The straight footwork and running her route. Amber Igidi, just such a talented athlete. We'll definitely go on and play pro somewhere, and maybe USA national team, who knows? Entered the week tops in the Big West in hitting percentage, tied for first in kills, fourth in blocks. Maybe in the running for a second straight Big West Conference Player of the Year award. Here's McDonald, sliding save there by Wagner. We got a joust up there, and it's won by Kay Lang. The smallest of the bunch near the net. Able to time it perfectly, and Hawaii gets the 15 first. Four straight Rainbow Wahine points. And we got a timeout on the floor. Kay Lang winning the duel. University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum OC16. Sponsored by Bank. The numbers presented by Long's Drugs, 471. That's UH's hitting percentage in their last home match with UC Irvine. Second highest kill percentage in the Robin Amo era. The top being 494 versus Fullerton back in 2017. Right now, Hawaii at 448. And how about the set distribution? IGD with five kills, Hawkins with three, Wagner with two, Evans with two, Kendra Hamm with two. Nice distribution. Riedel able to pound it off the block and out. First pass, Kendra McDonald. up to Sir Hunter Riedel. Hunter Riedel, four time first team all leaguer at Dana Hills High School. Won two league titles with the Dolphins. And had a big performance against Cal State Fullerton. Lang gonna go outside, here's Hawkus off the block, chased down there by Jensen. Now McDonald trying to touch it off the block, what a diving save there by Ham. Hawkus gets blocked, Lang goes right to Evans, kept alive, so on the attack it's Irvine running the slide to Gardner, dug up there by Ham. From the back row, soft touched over by Wagner. This is Feliciano on the swing. Now Hawkus, that one wide of the pin, Put it to the center of the floor. From the back row, Riedel sent it long. Was there a touch? No touch. And another long rally between these two squads goes to Hawaii. For number six, Hunter Riedel. Now wait for Hawaii, Jackie Matias. Here comes a double sub and again. Robin Hall really trying to give Jackie Matias uh, an opportunity to do some setting in meaningful situations as opposed to Third set, up 20 to 12. Redshirt freshman out of Punahou had nine assists. Had a kill and three digs last night against Fullerton. And also Paula Gershing on the floor. Diving save there, Edmonds. And Irvine on the attack, it's Gardner. Straight down to the Terraflex. Now look, Gardner. Spent three seasons at Fairfield in Connecticut. Prepped at San Clemente High School, was teammates with Lexi Grzynski over there. Had a big night against Fullerton last Tuesday. Seven kills, one error, hit 500. He also had three blocks in that game. But what, you're way out of system here. Gershon going to try to time it. Good sliding save there by Campbell Jensen. From the back row, that's McDonald dug up. Evans couldn't get it down. 
Again from the back row, McDonald is dug. Evans again, and that time it didn't get above the tape. Set a little bit low that time for Kennedy. Remember Kennedy's 6'3", through 6'2", she needs, she needs uh, some air under it. And the first hitting error for Kennedy Evans this weekend. <laughs> she had seven kills, no errors, and 14 attempts and three blocks last night. Matias going high and away to Gershing block. The cover there by Evans. On the other side, it's Hawkes, and she soft touches it into the tape. And all of a sudden, Ant Eater's within four, and that's going to prompt Robin Amo to signal for a timeout. And we're going to keep things here. And Hawaii hitting 282 at the moment, 167 on the other side for UC Irvine. Well, Rainbow Warrior basketball, if you want a first glimpse, uh, this is a tremendous opportunity to do so. Maui Strong Charity Exhibition Game. St. Mary's, a perennial power in the West Coast Conference, always seemingly in or around the top 25 rankings. They're coming in to take on Hawaii Friday, October 20th at 7 p.m. All net proceeds will go towards the Maui relief effort. And that is the key here. Purchase tickets at etickethawaii.com or Simplify Arena box office. Uh, again, this is not a game that is included or a ticket that's included in the season ticket package. Isn't uh, St. Mary's in, uh, absorbing a lot of the costs? Yes, they yeah. actually are. Uh, as opposed to some of the subsidies that Hawaii would normally pay under these circumstances, Randy Bennett, head coach for St. Mary's, uh, they're taking care of a lot of that uh, just because they want to be part of this uh, tremendous uh, effort to try to help uh, the people on Maui. So it's a wonderful, wonderful event. And you get your first glimpse at the Rainbow Warrior basketball team, and there's a lot of high expectations and hopes for this 2023-24 edition of the Hawaii Hoops team. So uh, definitely a, a great opportunity to come out and check that out. I was going to ask you quickly, you live in Maui. How's it going? Well, it's a work in progress, obviously, but the, the community response, not just here but abroad, has been overwhelming, and I think there is a lot of hope. That's the... That's the beauty, right? Coming out of tragedy is how, particularly in this place, right? The place we call home here in Hawaii, uh, how we tend to more often than not get each other's backs. And I think that that has been certainly uh, one of the gleaming, encouraging parts of, of what was otherwise a very, very tragic occurrence with the deadly wildfires. And that one is hit long by Hakas. Hawaii wants a touch, no touch called. And I think there are enough Rainbow Wahine players clamoring <laughs> for a challenge that Robin Amo is going to oblige. So her first challenge here of this first set. Unfortunately, it's the most difficult one, I think, to reverse. Because the ball's traveling so fast. It's like a blur up there. Ooh. What do you think there, C-Mac? Oh, I don't know. Left hand, maybe? The outside of blocker, you know? I don't see any fingers bending back. Good swing there by Hawkins. Obviously yeah. trying to go high hands, but... I don't know if our net cam has anything. Let's, let's see. Yeah, nothing that seems too overt. Oh, it, it doesn't, does it? Does it? I don't think it'll get overturned. Let's see, this one might show. The crowd, meanwhile, reacting to some uh, games being shown overhead on the big screen. That cam doesn't show it either. And so here we go, Wayne Lee off with the headset, and he'll have the call here. And the call will stand. Robin Amo loses the challenge. And so she just has one remaining here, unless this match goes to a fifth. And Irvine within three now, c -Mac. Yeah. You, know, you never know what's going to happen in this league as our pregame show talked about. So many upsets going around. How about Long Beach State losing today? My goodness. The CSUN, that was a big surprise that resonated throughout the Big West Conference as McDonald goes out after that replay challenge pause in the action. And Bakersfield 
takes the league leading Santa Barbara to five. What's up with this league, Canoa? <laughs> yeah, what did Lisa call it? The wild Big West? Yeah. Well, that was just a smash there by Ella Gardner. She's put several good swings into some of these sets that have gone her way. In fact, she's the top hitter right now for Irvine. Three kills, no errors. She's going OTT there. Lock was actually fairly well formed. The Garter just went over the top. Off for Iceland in the play right now. Play some middle. Also back to serve once again. Becca Sakota forces the out of system play. What a bump set though by Matias, but the block is up. How about some instant defense off for a Iceland? Six foot junior from San Ramon, California. Third year with Irvine. And she shut the door that time on Wagner. That was a great block. I think Feliciano might have also gotten a yeah. piece of it. Jumping up next to the 5'10 setter, Nicole Feliciano. And Evans misses wide. And look e here, Hawaii who led by as many as seven when it was 19 to 12. They lead by just one. And this crowd, which was pretty into things for a good portion of this first set, they have gone quiet for the moment. Here's Gershing going over the block. High and away to swing, Bertoloni is blocked back. From the back row, McDonald blocked and roofed. Riley Wagner got the most of that one. Jumping up next to Evans. And a much needed stuff there for Hawaii as they get to 21. It's gonna be a tight race to the finish here in the first. Finally after, as you see, Riley Wagner getting a piece of that one. Finally after a 7-1 run by Irving. Nice, nice move by them. Only trying to time it. Two hand save there. Edmonds, Matias going backside. Gershing down the line and down. Went through the hands of Campbell Jensen. And Paula Gershing gets her first kill of the evening. And a timeout is going to be taken by the Ant Eaters. Notice during that 7 1 run that Robin Amo did not push any panic buttons. She left her lineup in. She could have easily gone back to the starting lineup. Instead, she stayed with the people that she subbed in, showed some faith in them, and it, it's turned out to be a, mm, a pretty good decision. We have not, interestingly enough, seen Kaylin Alexander yet here in this match. Hawaii led by as many as seven here in this first set, but you see Irvine able to roar back, cut it to one. Now Hawaii has scored a couple straight, but uh, Kaylin Alexander, who had a strong match last night, after what Robin Amo described as a fantastic week of practice, seven kills, five digs, three blocks last night against Fullerton, but uh, we have yet to see her here in this match. Maybe we'll see her in the second set. I can see, like I said, I can see Robin Amo going with Alexander and Gershing on the outside um, just to keep them alive and active and engaged in this whole process. I mean, here we are. She's got all those arms, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, and, and, and here we are, though, several weeks into the Big West Conference schedule. Uh, is this, can we call this, Robin Amo still tinkering with the lineup? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, she's looking to have com competition at every position if she can. And one of the ways she does that is, if you play well, she'll reward you. If you don't play well, then she won't. You may have noticed the pink theme here this evening. It is a dig pink promotion here this evening at Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Fans were encouraged to wear pink in support of breast cancer awareness. And many of them got the memo and our production crew also obliging as well with this uh, graphics package tonight. <laughs> When both offenses have sure sputtered recently. Why now hitting 205? They're trying to take advantage of the overpass, and they do. And Bright Chidi gets 
kill number six. And she is, to this point, blemish-free here, C-Mac. Yeah, she's, she's something special. Even when she gets up against you know, really good block, she still manages to uh, surpass the block. New player in for Irvine. And on the back row, Emma Napoleon grew up in the islands. Kapahulu, to be exact. Mm, part Hawaiian descent. Here's Gershing. And there is Napoleon in the back row on the save. Now Bertoloni blocked and roofed. Amarai Gidi jumping up next to Gershing saying Apole. And it is a Loha ball here in set one. Hawaii has ripped off four straight. That was pretty straight down. Tough to cover that one. And there's the, there's the celebrator. There it is. Kelly Hawkins, the best. And it's an ace. An exclamation point. Courtesy Talia Edmonds to close the book on set number one. It was a bit of a seesaw-like battle. Oh, what you led by as many as seven, then one. They ended up winning by six. Gotcha. Welcome back time now for the Hawaii Honda Dealers Highlight Reel. Amber Igedi leaving her fingerprints figuratively and literally all over that opening frame, C-Mac. Yeah, six kills, no errors, in 667. Hitting from everywhere, hitting in front of the center, going all the way out to the pin, hitting slide. And there she is with her double shakas. <laughs> and she can just pretty much kind of do everything, even runs huddles these days during timeouts. No errors in that first frame. Meanwhile, between sets one and two, the Rainbow Warrior basketball team making an appearance, coming out in front of the crowd, and head coach Aron Gannat addressing the fans and reminding them about the exhibition game against St. Mary's on October 20th right here that will go to benefit the relief efforts on the island of Maui. Uh, there was a wonderful sign across from our vantage point, a bunch of fans holding up a We Love Lahaina sign. And, uh, that was pretty cool. And just a, a reminder of the information here, October 20th at 7 p.m., St. Mary's and Hawaii, all net proceeds will go towards the Maui relief effort. Purchase tickets at eTicketHawaii.com or Simplify Arena box office. Again, uh, this ticket not included in the Rainbow Warrior Basketball season ticket package. And there is a Love Lahaina sign. And that again, you know, you asked about the situation on Maui and it's going to take a long time to once again achieve a level of normalcy. There's still a lot of healing that needs to take place uh, but it is things like this it, uh, is efforts like what we're seeing from the Rainbow Warrior basketball team uh, the, the Luna Strong campaign to help Lahaina Luna student athletes all of these kinds of things that just chip away at accomplishing uh, that healing that rebuilding and uh, I've always thought it fascinating how sports can always seemingly play such an important and integral role in that kind of spirit rebuilding. I couldn't agree with you more. And this is one of those games where you don't want to go around looking for a free ticket. No, no, just no. Just pay. Just pay. Donate for to a the good, good cause. cause. Yeah. Hey, look who's starting. Kaylin yeah. Alexander. Paula Gershing. Just saying. I mean, unreal, right? Robin Amo working the combos. Riedel with the tough shot. Now Gershing coming back the other way. And she sends her right down Kalakaua Avenue. So yeah, we saw that first set starting lineup, which featured Riley Wagner, and also featured... Tali Hawkes. Uh, Tali Hawkes, and here the same rotation sans those two, and in place you have Paula Gershing and Caitlin Alexander. Develop all four arms. Bertoloni the tip shot, Gershing sniffs it out. Lang, one hand swiping set, and she's going to be called for the lift. The pass just too tight yes. to the net. Not much, not much Kate could do with that one. And so here is Campbell Jensen. Why out digging? UCI right now, 22 17. Gershing, that one too hot to handle for Jensen. Campbell Jensen, the 5'10 sophomore libero from Burbank, California for Irvine, was Big West all-freshman team 
last year. Actually third in the Big West Conference in digs, but even that one sizzled a little too much off of the palm of Paula Gershing. Yeah, she's a great defender, really fun to watch. Served by Ham, flattened out a little bit. So yeah, you, you start to piece together a bit of Robin Amo's thinking conceptually with the lineup, right? Kendra Ham seems to be at the moment a bit more of a constant, dare we say. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Kate Lang at the center spot. Talia Edmonds continuing at the libero. Amber Igidi, she's pretty untouchable, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. But those other two swinging positions, Robin Amo has felt the ability to have the, the freedom to work with as Amber Igidi sends it out, her first hitting error of the match. And the first lead of this match for UC Irvine. Yeah, I think it's a smart move by Robin, don't you? That to develop all four arms so in case there's any kind of injuries, illness shows up, she'll have she'll have great people ready to play. And Lang trying to go over on two. That one sent over the net, and it's Kate Lang getting the swing and she drops it in. Kate Lang. It wasn't a dump shot. It wasn't a bump kill. It was a full swing. Full swing paintbrush. You know what? I mean, we're not going to give her the smackdown description, but you know what? It found the floor inbounds. <laughs> it was in the air a long time, wasn't it? You had a calendar to measure it. It had an arc to it. Bertoloni, that was a heavy swing. Third year with the program from Markleyville, California. An all tournament earlier this year, the, the Adidas UC Irvine tournament. This is an Irvine team that went 20 and 10 last year, 13 and 7 in the Big West Conference. Those 20 wins actually forced a uh, fourth most overall in UC Irvine history, and in fact, the 13 Big West Conference wins were a program record. Over on two, Lang. Oh, she's thinking offensive here at the moment. How about two kills? <laughs> for Kate Lang here in set two. Very unusual. She's not considered an offensive setter. She doesn't dump the ball a whole lot. She had the one no looker last night against Fullerton, but in general, she knows she's got some good arms out there. She's got a great arm, and obviously an Amber Igidi. And right now in the middle, also, uh, Kennedy Evans is playing so well. So why take hits yourself when these other players can really put the ball down at a high rate? Well, that ball went down off the tape on the Amber Igidi serve, and she's got another service ace for the second straight night. She knows she missed that one, too. She wants to keep this ball in place so she can play defense. <laughs> she wants to get another dig, right? She had a dig yet tonight? Uh, she's got a dig. Okay. Oh, how about that nifty move by the freshman, Nicole Feliciano? We talked about UC Irvine and the season they had last year. But they did lose two of their best players in the offseason who transferred out. Uh, Oni Ofuegbu and Joy Ume, they were middle blocker and outside hitter respectively and accounted for 90% of yeah. this UC Irvine offense. That's huge. That's a major rebuilding project. Ofuegbu who transferred to Oregon and Ume who transferred to UCLA. Flat-footed Emma Napoleon back on the floor, hit it into the net, and Hawaii jumps in front 6-5 here in set two. Nice to see Emma getting some time tonight. She's been rehabbing for almost two years, an ACL that had complications. So she's really happy to be on this floor playing in front of this crowd in her hometown. She gets the swing there, got blocked. She'll get a second crack at it. Kate Lang the first touch. So bump set goes to Ham. Good angle, but what a save. As another little back and forth at the net from Napoleon. And then Bertoloni goes off the fingertips. Edmonds, high ball back set goes to Alexander. That's dug up by Jensen. And then the one hand block there by Alexander to keep it alive. Ham then drops one right in the middle of the floor. This is very unusual block here. Alexander goes up and there's nobody hitting, so she comes down and then goes back up again for the King Kong block, the one-hander. And that was key, slowed it down, allowed Hawaii to transition, and now 
They're up two. Looks like there might be an injury on Hawaii's side of the court. Looks like Kate Lang is pointing to her arm, it looks like. Could be some blood, potentially, I think, you see, under her right arm. Oh, yeah. So Renee Shigemura is going to go over there and try to clean that up. Actually saw that happen to Paula Gershing last night. They had to cover up some blood that was on her hand. Don't say this isn't a contact sport here. <laughs> I think Renee Shigemura will probably put a full-blown bandage, more than a bandage on there. She'll wrap it because Kate Lang doesn't need to be attacking the ball and hitting. You see the ouch there. You <laughs> the, the grimacing from Kate as the antiseptic is put on. Yeah. That, that can sting, that's for sure. Well, let's see if she does a wrap on there. Kind of an awkward spot for a cut like that, too. Not sure how that happened. Might have been on her pancake that she popped up earlier. <laughs> well, I think maybe there was more of a uh, collision with one of her teammates out right. there on the floor in the last few moments. You're right. <laughs> Look at the reaction of, of the other Rainbow Wahine when she showed them the placement of that cut. So here she runs into Alexander here, and I think that's where it took place. <laughs> Kendra Ham, hey, calling 911. That's right. <laughs> Very concerned in the moment. It looks like we are now ready to continue. Kate Lang. Tops in the Big West Conference in assists, but she has been an all around player. Actually, entered this match tied for second in digs on the team. And remember, she started the season winning the first five Big West Conference Center of the Week awards. I mean, they may as well go ahead and uh, name that thing after her at this race. Kate Lang, Center of the Week award. <laughs> and it's interesting though, when you talk to her about it, she actually feels very uncomfortable because she knows that her hitters are the ones that really made her look good. She's very aware of that and is uncomfortable getting all those awards. There's an example right there. You can't get the assists without the hitters, and you can't get an opportunity to set those hitters without the passers. And uh, yeah, exactly. Kate Lang always very quick to defer some of that credit and attention. Here's Napoleon, and she's able to go off the block and out. I tell you what, Ashley Hain loves Emma Napoleon, 5'10 sophomore. We mentioned grew up in Hawaii, but a graduate of Village Christian High School in California, and Ashley Hain calls her a stud. She just recently got cleared due to injury issues, and uh, Hain saying that the girls have really kind of rallied her behind her. Here's another connection for you, Kanoa. She played for an Iolani boy, Brent Asuka, <laughs> at Village Christian High School. Well, you should probably go full disclosure here, uh -oh. C-Mac. What's that? and let people in on another connection that you have. Oh, her mom, Leilani, who is here tonight, sitting in the front row, I hired, when I was athletic director, <laughs> I hired her to coach volleyball. Oh boy, Kendra Ham with a smash. And that breaks the eight all time. I'm really impressed with Kendra Ham on the right side. I'm becoming more and more convinced that maybe she is that person on the right side. Especially because I saw her hit the D ball tonight. Because that right side person, I think, has got to bring that to the table to make Hawaii's offense more diverse. Well, and the defense that she always brings, certainly of value as well. Bertoloni dug up there by Lang. Here's Ham again, past the double block. And she's grooving at the moment. Kendra Ham cooking with Kiave. And Hawaii up two. So uh, going back to your connection to Emma Napoleon, you hired her mom as a volleyball coach. Good hire? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There she is right there. A, a she's, feather in your cap she's as an in, AD? She's got the white leg. Oh, yeah. She's got the white leg on there. And then Arnie. As Hunter Riedel 
was able to pull the string on that one. And it's a one point battle here in set two. I'm not surprised that these two teams are playing about even right now. You see everybody stepping up the game, their game for sure. Paying a lot of attention to Amber Igedes. You saw three blockers up there. Ham was able to go wrist away and it kind of caught Jensen the libero off guard. She was ready, I think, for maybe a tip shot, and instead it came up near her chin area. Exactly. You know what I like about that shot by Ham is that it was something different. Most people just tip over the block, and the back left has come up to pick that up very easily. Instead, she, you know, she wristed it pretty hard to the, to the back left position. Look at that pickup by Talia Edmonds. And then Gershing had the second touch, but just found its way to an area where no Rainbow Wahine were. But yeah, you got to love the effort by Talia Edmonds there. As you see, Irvine gets the point. Bertoloni on the kill. 10 serving 11. Competitive second frame to say the least. Here's Igidi. Oh, she hung. She levitated. And then she laid the smack down. She was in a little bit early. And so therefore, she got up there. She had to wait until Kate Lang received the ball. She's up, hangs, and then a little bit cut back across her body to the open court. Yeah, some uh, vintage hanging and banging there by Amber Igidi. And how about the serve tickling the tape there by Gershing? Bertoloni soft touches it over. Advantage Hawaii. They go outside. Alexander. What a dig there, Jensen. Bertoloni again down the line. Popped up by Ham. And Gershing sliding in to try to see if she can come up with that second touch to no avail. So Bertoloni starting to find some traction as well. She's what Ashley Hain calls our quiet leader. She is the team captain. 24 kills earlier this year against New Mexico. Here's Alexander. Oh my goodness. Just crushes it down the line. They get a statement that she wants one of those outside hitting positions, don't you think? <laughs> well, she had a rough go of it on the road last week. Struggled mightily against Long Beach State. Got a DNP the next night against UC San Diego. She responded, which is something I think that Robin Amo was extremely impressed with. As Gardner on the overpass couldn't do anything with it. So here's Alexander again, soft touch. Sliding save there by Maya Neiman, who is now on the floor. Good dig there along the back line by Gershing. Alexander, the dig by Bertoloni. They run the slide to Gardner, tip shot. Evans handles it, bumps it, Alexander. Look at that angle! A thin slice of bread, and Hawaii up three. You do not see that shot very much. 